Hey, hey, Mill Soap Garage, 2016. Uh, spring is here. Weather's nice. Let's uh, let's get started here, huh? Uh, first rifle I'm gonna bring to you is the one I was teasing uh, last uh, video. Now let's cut to Germany in the uh, mid 30s. Uh, what's going on in Germany in the mid 30s is that, um, and of course, you need to really jump in and do some like serious research because I could just give like the broadest synopsis of somebody that uh, you know just uh, reads a couple of things, looks online. I'm, I'm by no means a um, you know historian on any of this, but. Um, like I plant the seeds and then it's as far as I'm concerned, it's up to you to, uh, you know, go and uh, grow the tree uh, of knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Um, but of course, uh, you could uh, learn something that uh, new uh, that's related to what I'm talking about here and uh, post it. And, uh, you know, we all learn at the same time. I don't know where I'm going with this, but let's just take it here. Germany, 1935, 1934, the Treaty of Versailles was uh, on top of them, you know, that uh, they weren't allowed to build their military, they weren't allowed to, uh, I'd love to get a copy of that now that I think of it, it's like, you know, they, they, you read things in history about what what stipulations they were under, you know, which was basically a penalty after World War One that, like, you know, they were the cause of it, and they're the ones that had to uh, pay reparations and uh, and uh, had all of these rules as to how big their army could be, how many ships they were allowed to have, how many tanks they were allowed to have. You know, it was, like, all broken down. I'd love to really see a copy of what that treaty, you know, what it actually said. I wonder if I look it up online, I could actually find it. Um, interesting thought. But basically, um, Germany wanted to start, you know, under the under Hitler's power, he wanted to start, um, you know, rearming and sort of the treaty was like kind of still there, but he was like, you know, really skirt, uh, uh, you know, walking a fine line between violating it and not violating it. And, and there were even some things that were in this treaty that he wasn't allowed to do or land that he was supposed to give up that... Germany kind of started to take back and kind of everybody was just sort of letting it go because, uh, you know, the, the Treaty of Versailles really did go, like, horribly against Germany and, like, it's almost like uh, other countries, other leaders kind of understood that, uh, you know, maybe it was a little harsh, all right, let them get away with that, all right, let them get away with this, you know. But the rearming thing, I think, was, that was a, a tough one, you know, nobody was really going to, stand by and let uh, Germany just start building a war machine right in front of their face, you know what I mean? So uh, in order to be able to have guns to actually train troops, see, I think you could like secretly have troops, but you couldn't really secretly have guns, you know what I mean? If you're making guns, they got to come from somewhere. They, if, if, if you're being watched, they can kind of keep an eye on how many guns you're making. You know, what you do with a bunch of people when you're, uh, you know, in barracks and you're, tra you're training them, that's one thing. No one's really paying that much attention. But the weapons themselves, like this was the German K-98. Now, if you wanted to, like, build a whole bunch of these to, like, train an army and you were only allowed a certain amount, you're really not going to be able to just start cranking out these rifles without anybody knowing about it. You'd have to be kind of slick about it. So, like, what um, Hitler did was there were some companies that, were contracted to make rifles that were similar, if not identical, in weight, balance, and overall look of how they operated, you know, with the sights being here, the same sight picture, the same, the same uh, um, sight radius, you know, and things in similar locations, like, so you just get used to where the safety is. And uh, how, where exactly the bolt is in relation to the trigger and things like that. And they would train on these things. And this is a uh, 22 caliber. You can see how small the breech is there. This one is a 22 caliber. Or these trainers. They call them trainers. They were all, uh, I'm pretty sure, were 22 caliber. And, um, and this way, uh, they could say, well, this is just, uh, they're 22s. I mean, how are we using this for war? This is just, uh, 
this is just some guy. It's just it's a sporting thing. This is just a sport that uh, you know we have a bunch of people that uh, you know go out and do like target shooting with twenty twos. You know what I mean? And and uh, it is true. You wouldn't expect like a, a, a f an army. No, nobody's really going to be afraid of a uh, company of a, a company of a uh, country that's cranking out a massive amount of twenty two rifles. You're not going to be really too afraid of that. But meanwhile, if they're just dimensionally the same as uh, you know your war rifle, you can uh, <laughs> you know you can train your troops with them. And uh, then when you actually get the real thing in their hands, they're familiar with uh, that particular sight picture, exactly where the gun sits in relation to where your hand goes to the trigger and exactly how to flip the safety and, and things like that, you know. And then, and as they progress, this one, this is a Simpson. This is a model, what is it again? Model W. W625B. See, they had gone through, they had gone through different incarnations of these. We see how. So look at that sight and the sight picture. The way the sight, the way it looks when you look down the sights is just identical to a K98, which is funny. And and this one, see, there's no bayonet mount here, so they didn't do any bayonet training. Um, but it does have this like. Uh, mock cleaning rod this is really nothing this only goes in about that far it's just a just metal that just screws in there just to give the feel or the, of having this there but it's not a real cleaning rod and uh what's interesting is it has finger grooves cut in the stock which no mauser had so it's almost like they did that on purpose to be like look see it's not uh, supposed to be a mauser it just uh, looks similar but it's not really so look it's got finger grooves no mauser um uh, that, that germany used i don't think had finger grooves and uh, and they did have a recess here underneath the bolt, the turn down bolt, the uh, the K98. You see that uh, that recess there in the wood that they do not have here. Um, so in those respects, it's not like it's made to. You wouldn't confuse it for one, um, but uh, you know you see these things on a rack uh, when you're at a gun show or something, and you do like a double take if you're not familiar with them, because um, that familiar flip safety in the back is here. And, uh, you know, and just the, uh, the, just the general configuration of how the receiver looks here is, is very Mauser-esque. But this one, let me see, I got stuff written down here. Um, you can only really estimate the manufacturing date for this guy. And I had 1934 to 1935. Because, like I said, there were certain incarnations of these. So the ones from 33 and 32, they, they looked less. As it got closer and closer to wartime... Um, these things look, then all of a sudden they had bayonet lugs, and then they had this, they, they got actually closer and closer to looking like a true K98. Um, by 1935, they were pretty damn close. And it's funny, the weight, the weight is just about identical, and the balance, you know, and the balance that you feel like where they, uh, where the center of gravity is on them, that was probably the most important thing, is just to get used to, um, hiking with it, running with it, training with it. Uh, marching with it, you know, uh, crawling, going, jumping through obstacles, and just having to just carry this around with you or sling this over your shoulder. See, the sling points are identical, which is interesting. You know what I mean? And uh, and that's funny. That's that's what was important to them more than anything else. Probably was uh, yeah, it could fight. It was a single shot. There was no magazine here. It's not like you you learn to load or speed load or. Or slap like uh, you know uh, stripper clips in here, you know, like fast. Not what they were for. Um, they were more for when you trained the troops that they had this thing married to them, where they just got used to carrying around something this heavy with this dimensions with this type of strap, like for you know days and days of whatever they went through. Um, so uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, on the barrel it says uh, Flub Stahl Krupp Essen. And, uh, you know, somebody there made the barrel, somebody there made the wood, so something like that. I don't know, just from what I've read, there's just several manufacturers there. But Simpson was the, uh, the uh, company, Simpson and Company. And what's interesting was they weren't around much longer than 1935 because it was a Jewish-owned company. And when the anti... Uh, Jewish sentiment started to rise in Germany. They were quickly taken over by somebody else, and 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 you'll see ones that look like this. They look similar. They were made in the same factory 
with the same tooling, and they started to advance to look more like wartime rifles, but all of a sudden this name gone off of it. No more Simpson, you know what I mean? There was like another company in there. They were they were taken over, acquired, let's say, you know. But um, just another one of those interesting things, like the Ludwig Lové Mausers of, uh, you know, of the uh, turn, around the turn of the century. Um, you had these, which was here in 1935, a Jewish company, uh, you know, when uh, Jews were alive and well in Germany and a, a, a vibrant part of their uh, manufacturing and culture and, and everything. And uh, even so much so that they're making weapons for their rearmament. And, uh, you know, a little writing on the wall there that, uh, you know, be careful who you, be careful who you help. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I love this thing. Um, being that I love the Mausers, this is a, just an interesting little addition. And uh, have not had a chance, believe it or not, to take this thing out to the range yet. But I'm going to do that. Uh, my next range visit, visit, it's definitely coming. Probably going to do that during this week. So I should have a video up this week on shooting this guy. And we'll also put up a video this week on uh, another acquisition. I'm going to do a nice back-to-back -back thing this week with uh, a couple of videos. Been away for a long time. Sorry, it's been, it was a tough winter. Had to end the videos early last fall um, due to some issues going on. Uh, didn't really have the time. And uh, had to start late this year. Um, again, some issues. And, uh, you know, we'll be, I think the uh, Millsurf Garage might be relocating sometime this uh, summer. So we might have a uh, bigger, better area to be doing these videos, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's the Simpson Model W625B. A common name for these things is German World War II Trainer. 22 long rifle. Another thing that interested me was I looked up, I was like, wow, 22 long rifle was around in 1935? I didn't think they were around that, that early. I was really surprised when this 22 long rifle uh, chambered guns from the 1800s. I, I'm pretty sure. I looked at when 22, when the 22 long rifle was uh, put into use, and I was amazed at how long ago it really was. Uh, 22 long rifle's been around forever. You know, uh, now these things, that's the 22 long rifle. I wouldn't mess around with longs or shorts, um, only because uh, I'm not really sure what's going on in there in that receiver. If it steps down or something like that, I just... I would just stick with the long rifles and that's it. But uh, seems like it's going to do okay. You know, it, it's, it, it, fun it seems like it functions okay. Um, I just cycled a couple of rounds through it quick just to make sure the ejector works. Didn't look like there was an ejector, but it's in there. I see it now. And, uh, and it was working properly, uh, functioning properly. So, um, you know, and I do see a fire pin firing pin sticking in there. Look at this little bolt. How funny is this? It even has the, I'll show you. Even has the bolt uh, removal uh, thing here. You pull, you know, like on a regular mouse, you pull this back to remove the bolt. Look at that little bolt. How funny is that? Look with the little rim fire firing pin in there. Funny. Uh, good construction. This one, some of these are a little iffy. The older ones, they looked a little cheesy. Uh, I had seen them in places, and I, I, I didn't make the jump because they looked kind of lame. And then uh, some of the ones that were... Uh, around uh, a little bit later than this one that I had looked at that were a little kind of closer to looking like a Mauser. They had the bayonet lug and that's beat up. Uh, this one's got beautiful wood. You know, I just, I liked the way this one looked and uh, the price was right. So I'm like, oh, my turn. My turn to get a uh, Mauser trainer. And, uh, yep, so that's it. So hang in there. Um, we're going to be uh, posting. I got at least three at least three feature uh, uh, new guns to feature uh, and uh, you know and it's only April so uh, we're gonna be having some fun this spring into the summer and we're gonna be doing some range videos and hope to see you there <laughs>